DFD stands for Direct From Disk and is a source module mode for playing very large sample sets in real time without having to load all sample data into RAM. In today's video tutorial, we'll take a look at how to use and optimize Contact DFD. And never miss a tutorial by subscribing to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash adsrtoots. When using DFD, only the first part of each sample is loaded into RAM, and when a sample is played, the first part is played instantly from RAM, while the rest of it is streamed from your hard disk. Here are a few things you should be aware of when using DFD. The maximum number of voices will be lower compared to the sampler module. This is because the latency and throughput of your hard disk will be a bottleneck for sampling performance. Of course, if you use an SSD, the latency and throughput will be minimal, if any at all. If you are using a regular hard drive, you can optimize your overall voice count by putting only groups and instruments that access very large samples into DFD mode while keeping all others in sampler mode. Another thing you can do is don't try to use DFD mode with samples that reside on a CD-ROM. Copy them to your hard disk first. Another thing that you want to keep in mind is although the DFD mode minimizes RAM usage in comparison to the sampler mode, it still has a noticeable memory footprint as it needs to preload the start of all samples into memory. And last but not least, you can switch between DFD and sampler mode at any time. However, when switching from DFD to sampler, there may be a slight pause as the entire sample set needs to be loaded into RAM. So let's take a look at how you can optimize um, splitting samples up by group into samples that use DFD and samples that use um, sampler mode. I'm just going to find some samples to use real quick. Let's see if there's anything in here. No samples in here. Do you have any samples in it? Okay. So these are my fictitious big samples. All right, so here I have my two groups. I'm going to close group editor and I am going to go to the monitor tab. And this is a quick way to switch between groups when you um, don't need to see it. All right, so group one is using DFD, group two is using sampler. And I can go to inch. Well, actually, before I get here, let's just continue on, and I'll we'll come back to um, adjust optimizing the DFD settings. All right. So when you load an instrument, preloaded RAM is allocated based on the instrument's preload buffer setting. This specifies how much of each sample you want preloaded into RAM. The amount of RAM needed to load the first part of every sample in an instrument is the used instrument memory. All right, just keep that in mind. Used instrument memory. You can calculate used instrument memory by multiplying the number of samples in an instrument by the preload buffer size. Okay, so 
Use instrument memory equals the number of samples times preload buffer size. Okay, so the default is 60 KB. Um, you would multiply that by the number of samples. And this is how you get your preload buffer size, which will show up here. All right, if you want some more detailed information, um, if you go to the engine, um, this will show you additional information about your samples. So as the preloaded part of the sample is being played back, what happens is the hard disk fetches the rest of the sample. So when you first load your instrument and you click on a key, what happens is the first part of the sample um, that was loaded by preload um, is played and then the hard disk plays the rest and then as it plays the rest it loads the rest into memory okay so the amount of time which is basically fractions of a second is determined by the preload buffer size so if you make a big buffer more of the sample is loaded in memory and less of it is streamed from disk and if you make the buffer small less of the sample is loaded in memory and more of it is streamed stream from disk so keeping that in mind this is how you optimize DFD okay so let's go back to um, instrument options um, DFD so this is where you set the preload buffer size okay um, and it can also be set globally in the options tab um, of contact okay so if you set it here if you enable this checkbox right here this will overwrite any instrument that you load. It'll overwrite the buffer size if it uses DFD. So this only affects instruments that use uses DFD. If it uses sampler or any other mode, this setting won't um, take be taken into account. But if it is using DFD, this is how you would set it globally. Okay. Also, while we're here in the um, contact options menu, uh, this option here, load samples in background. Um, you can enable or disable this option. When you enable it, this allows the instant playback for samples which are not yet loaded. Um, so if you have a slow hard disk or you're experiencing glitches or audio dropouts while playing during background loading, then you want to disable this, this, uh, um, this option. But truth be told, with modern hard drives, even if it's not an SSD, um, if it's something that's, you know, that's made in the last... I don't know, six years or so, you, you shouldn't have any issues um, loading samples in the background. Um, and if you're on an SSD, you, you definitely shouldn't have any issues loading samples in the background. So Native Instruments recommends leaving the preload buffer size to the default value. But let's look at the pros and cons of increasing or decreasing the setting, okay? So here we have the default value of 60. If we increase the preload buffer size, so you put it to 180. What this does is this will cause the instrument to use more memory and less disk. Okay, so if I, you know, if so right now we see that the memory has gone up. Okay, so right now, more of the sample is loaded into memory and less of it from disk. So that, that's what happened when we um, increase the, the preload buffer size. And the benefit of this is that it can avoid voice dropouts that's caused by disk overload, but will increase the instrument's memory footprint. Okay, now let's take a look at what happens if you decrease the preload buffer size. All right, let's take it down to the minimum, which is 6 KBs. You instantly saw the memory decrease by a, a lot. I mean, it went down from megabytes to kilobytes, okay? Um, so what this does is this uses more disk and less memory. So keep in mind that this lowers the memory usage of the instrument. It requires that you have a fast... Um, hard drive because your disk will have to work harder and faster um, so what you want to do is you want to find a compromise between the middle ground 
um, between memory and hard disk. Now, if you have an SSD, if your samples are on an SSD, this kind of goes out the window. Um, if you if you have an F SSD, my recommendation is to leave this at the default, which is 60. Um, there's no harm, no foul um, to leaving it at 60 if you have an SSD. Um, as long as you have sufficient memory, which you should have eight gigs or more, leaving it at 60, I think is probably the, the best thing to do. That's a default and that's a, that's what con I mean, native instruments recommend. If you have an SSD preload buffer size is not going to be an issue for you. Okay. Now, if you're working on an, on an HD, on a regular HD mechanical hard drive an HDD, this is where you need to start playing with, um, your, preload buffer size okay so now what you want to find what you want to do is you want to find a balance between using your disk and and and, um, and RAM and you want to lean more toward the memory side of things um, than than the hard drive side of things um, especially if you have single file samples that are huge if, if they're huge then what you want to do is you want it to use more memory and less disk okay if you have samples if you have a large number of samples and they're smaller um, you might benefit from uh, reducing the memory and use more of your disk so you know those are you know the, the kind of starting points that you want to um, start from when determining what your, your preload buffer size should be and also keep in mind in the end, um, you know, different systems might respond differently. The samples will be different. So this is just a starting point. So you need to um, adjust this and, and, and play and make sure that you don't have any, any glitches or, or audio dropouts. Um, if you start to have those, then you might want to back, back down. Um, or if you notice that um, your samples are, are, are slow to, 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 to sound because um, more of it is, is on a disc and you know, you're getting a delay when you hit play, then maybe you need to increase your, your preload buffer size. Okay, so these are just starting points. And um, um, now that you know what the buffer size does, you know how to adjust it and what adjusting it means. Okay. Um, and also when you're in instrument options, I didn't, I didn't mention this earlier. This is where the option for background loading is, um, in the options menus in a different, um, separate from the preload buffer size, but in the instrument options is together. So now that we know everything behind DFD, um, you can come to the following conclusions with, with regard to memory, the preload buffers can be adjusted to meet requirements, um, and memory. Uh, preload memory consumption is directly related to the number of samples used so it might be necessary to set the buffer size low when using an instrument with high sample counts and limited memory and don't forget to check out our website at www.contacttutorials.com for more contact tutorials and sounds ADSR contact tutorials supercharger contact skills this is DJ nice signing off until next time now go make some music